Now, a student who was falsely accused of rape is considering suing the police and the Crown Prosecution Service after his trial collapsed. The Metropolitan Police is holding an urgent review after a detective failed to hand over text messages on his accuser's phone that undermined her case. The case against Liam Allen took two years to come to court, uh, and I'm very pleased to say he joins me now. First of all, what has the last two years been like for you? <sighs> um hell but it's, it's impossible to put into words I mean you don't really anticipate anything like that happening to yourself you I mean you hear about it quite a bit in terms of famous people and things like that but you don't really anticipate for yourself how that's gonna be but it's trying to live normally knowing it's not normal sort of thing it's pretending something's not there when you know it's always there sort of thing and I was reading at one point you were told that it was unlikely that case charges were going to be brought, but then they were. Yeah, I was in constant contact um, to try and sort of find out what the decision was. I mean, you left in limbo um, where you, there's no contact really, you're the one chasing it up. And I mean, I think it was about seven months where there was no real contact other than me calling. Um, and then it was two hours before. I got the call to say I was charged, I was told, you know, it's unlikely that you'd be charged. I mean, it had be, been told when, even when I was arrested and interviewed. After the interview, I was even told, you know, it's unlikely to go anywhere because it's just word against word. Um, but, yeah, the, obviously two hours later you get a call saying you're charged. You can't imagine. So you have all this hope and then it's just ripped away straight away. And your face has been all over the media <laughs> and lots of the papers. It has. How do you think that's going to impact on you? Negatively or...? I mean, I've, I've received a ex ex huge amount of support. I couldn't even put it into words how grateful I am, obviously, for the messages. I've made a point of replying to everyone who's messaged me on Facebook, whether it's just to say thank you, whether they're reporters or whether they're MPs, or, or there's all sorts of people. But a lot of people have told me their stories of what they've been through, whether it's retrospective or currently going through. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, you can't really live, go back to the life that you had now because you're now, you know, representing those people. Um, I Will have you the, try and fight for other people now? I now have the opportunity to give them a voice and as much as I'd love to sort of run away and, you know, hide and go back to what I was doing before, which is just living a normal life, helping people on a smaller scale. Yeah, I, I couldn't walk away from those people. I know what it's like to have felt alone through the process and, you know, those people have been alone and they want the opportunity to make a difference. Whether that's through me, I, I'm not sure because I don't know what's going to happen in the near future, but I'm taking the next steps to sort of make sure that I am speaking out for those people and things like this obviously do help them have a voice in terms of that. And you study criminology, <laughs> uh, do you think you'll still pursue that then in the future? Yeah, oddly enough it's maybe more motivated to make a difference rather than, you know, slate everything. Um, I mean there's not any individuals in particular that are responsible for this, it is a whole system sort of failure and it is something that needs to be looked at on a, a much broader scale rather than just looking at the individuals in in my case specifically because it's happening everywhere i mean it's been reported that it's happening in all different sorts of places but it's not just letting obviously falsely accused people let down it's letting real victims down because you know if the evidence is there and it's not looked at then their case gets thrown out for the wrong reasons that suspect doesn't it the perpetrator isn't actually caught you know, they're free to walk free and the victim's left with the real trauma. And, and the same vice versa, if you're falsely accused, they have their own trauma. Mm -hmm. of, you know, they've gone through that, but if the evidence was there, it could have all been avoided. And I suppose for families as well, because it, it must have put your family under an awful lot of pressure. It has a huge ripple effect. Um, you know, I'm not from a huge family. It's my mum, my great aunt, a um, few distant cousins um, that I speak to every now and again, and an uncle um, who I rarely speak to at the moment. But. I've had the luxury of being able to have friends as family, you know, where I'm not from a big family, I get to choose who I want as family sort of thing. So I've got people that I consider brothers, sisters, who've stood by me through this hand in hand from the day that I was arrested till obviously even now, they're still sort of here with me, you know, making sure that I'm okay, they're looking after me, making sure that I'm looking after myself. You know, it's not all getting on top of me, so. Yeah. Do you think in rape cases, until people are proved that they are guilty, should they be given anonymity? I think it would be fair. I think every individual in the case should be given anonymity, um, even afterwards, unless they said that they want to go public. Obviously, I didn't really have a huge option in terms of my name being like, spoken about. But yeah, 100%, because you can't judge people's reactions. You can't predict people's reactions, so you can't stop that. And then you also can't stop if people are going to you know, want to cause harm to you if they join in, you know? And how about the CPS and the police now? Are you going to take action against them? As far as I'm aware, that's the plan. 
Um, obviously, I don't really want to be their enemy um, in terms of that because I'm not here to be vengeful. That's, that's not the aim at all. And Do you feel angry towards them? I think it's past the point of anger. You know, it's, it's disappointment. I think it's probably the best way to sum it up. The, the very thing that I'm studying to go into is the very thing, you know, that, that sort of let me down in terms of that. But I, I'd love to, obviously, I feel like when there's solutions and stuff being spoken about in terms of internal investigations, you know, no one's really speaking about to the people who have been through it, who have been let down, whether they're, you know, real victims or falsely accused, because both have to work together. You can't just use falsely accused because obviously I'm, I'm in the news at the moment. There are real victims that are let down by the same system. And I've said this time and time again, I'm more than 110% happy to go and speak to those people that obviously want to get that perspective and work with them 100%. It, w it wouldn't bother me at all. Indeed. Well, the police obviously can't comment because this investigation is ongoing, but thanks ever so much for sharing your story. appreciate your time.